still looking. I'm still, I'm still posting things. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Get back out of there. <sighs> uh, Hi, everyone who's possibly watching us. Okay. Hi. Um. Uh oh. Randy, is, is Randy? Uh, He's Randy's gone. gone. Okay. Gone. He left it to root devices. Okay. So. So yeah. Let's. Uh, let's Welcome just... everybody. If you're here already, this is our panel for ComfyCon on comics with a day job, and it took us a long time, obviously, to get set up because we're amazingly tech savvy. <laughs> Um, I am Monica Gallagher of EatYourLipstick.com, and how about we all introduce ourselves, guys? Sure. I'm Jeff Zugail of Not Invented Here. And uh, I'm Gordon McAlpin of MultiplexComic.com. Um, can't, for some reason, my face isn't showing up on my own screen, but whatever. Uh, anyway, yeah, I do, I do Multiplex. Woo. And we all have day jobs. Yeah, so how about maybe we should start by talking about what our day jobs are. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, do, I do graphic design and I do web design. Um, I've been doing that for 12 years. Um, and five years into it, I switched my hours from full-time to 32 hours a week, and then... Three years ago, I went down to 24 hours a week, and I'm hoping I can gradually just disappear, and they won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about you guys? What do you guys do for a day job? I'm a concept designer, illustrator, and I work in video games, among other things. Uh, and I am currently a uh, graphic design graduate student. Um, I, I worked as a print production artist primarily for... 15 something years after graduating um, college and uh, and so I did that pre-production a little bit of design a little bit of retouching um, towards the end as in right before I started going to grad school I ended up doing more uh, freelance illustration work but uh, but I, I kind of just consider myself a freelance illustrator uh, production artist whatever freelance anything uh, with um, uh, the Adobe programs. So that's a good title, freelance anything. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so when did you guys start doing comics? I think I started. I started in college, and I'm really old, so I started in 2000 when I was still in school. You're you're you would call yourself old, yeah. okay? <laughs> um, I just turned 40. So, <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure I'm older than you. I got you beat by quite a margin. I'm the old okay. guy in this club. Trust me. Okay. Um, the, only, uh, the only guy I know for sure who's older than me in web comics is Phil Folia, and I don't know by how much. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, um, I actually I was a, a late bloomer in terms of comics. I wanted to draw comics uh, from when I was in college until uh, well present day, I suppose. Um, but during my 20s, I was kind of too busy watching movies and smoking weed uh, to do anything. Uh, you know? So it wasn't until I was 28 or 29 that I actually started properly actually drawing and publishing comics on the web. Uh, Multiplex started in 2006 or so, and it's been running continuously um, since then. So it, it took me a while to get my ass in gear and actually finish things. I had started a few comics, but, uh, but yeah, they, they just never, they never showed up anywhere uh, or never got finished um, in order to show up anywhere. Um, so for me, one of the big stepping stones was, was starting Multiplex um, uh, because it was you know one strip at a time at first anyway. Uh, it's kind of evolved into an epic narrative, uh, like the kind I was always starting in my 20s and never getting past 20 pages into it. So, you know, I figured out how to, how to do something that worked with my lifestyle. I do, I'm doing the finger quotes a lot, I, I know. But, um, but yeah, so I finally managed to figure out how to, to finish comics, which is a good start to doing comics, I think. Um, yeah, I get a lot of questions about... Um, 
how you get started doing comics and how much you should have banked before you do a web comic and <laughs> my advice to just do it to just start and start putting stuff up because it's, it's never going to be perfect and you're always going to want feedback and that's what's amazing about web comics so as long as you start putting them out and then do it on a fairly regular basis then you're going to get like what you need to continue basically yeah um i i don't have a uh I don't have a buffer at, at all. <laughs> um, sometimes, sometimes I'll have like a, a one or two strip buffer, maybe like during breaks. Uh, but you know, when I'm in grad school, I, it just it just disappears very quickly. So, well, yeah, I guess. Um, so some of the the tips that I would say for um, doing a day job while also doing a comic. One of my um, things that's really helped me is to set a schedule. So as you are like going about your day job, whether that's like nine to five, Monday through Friday, or whatever, um, make sure that you also set a schedule for your comics. Like if you're like you know Tuesday from seven to nine at night, I'm going to work on a comic, or on the weekend or whatever. But make sure you make that schedule as set as your day job, and that people know that you're kind of like unavailable at that time, so that they can. And you'll have to remind them constantly, like, no, this this really means like I, I'm not available. <laughs> Because I, I used to switch it around all the time, like, oh, well, then maybe I'll push this to Friday or push it to whatever, and then it would just, I would get caught up, like, like watching TV and getting drunk, like all my other friends with day jobs. <laughs> yeah, uh, same for me. Um, uh, Sunday night, and, uh, well, it used to be kind of, uh, I used to do Monday and Thursday updates. Um, now it's Monday and Friday, just because my schedule at, at school is uh, is a little wonkier. But uh, Sunday night, I'm always always working on the Monday strip, and uh, and now I work on the Friday strip on Friday because and it's late and it just has to be. But um, but yeah, if it wasn't for that um, that kind of set schedule, uh, I wouldn't get anything done. When I very first started Multiplex, um, it was it was the anytime I you know, got one done update schedule, and, and I, you know, missed a, a week or so here and there because, you know, I had the time, but I was like, oh, I don't have to do anything. I'm going to watch a movie or, or whatever. And so, so yeah, once I said Monday and Thursday, and I would do, I would work on the Thursday strip like Tuesday and Wednesday night and kind of get half started on Tuesday and then finish it Wednesday. Uh, but once I had that schedule, it, it, being so, it became so much easier to, to get the work done. Um, it, uh, yeah, it, without that structure, uh, you, you just never get anything done. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, let, let me add the, uh, the next challenge. But for, first, let me say, this is how long I've been doing comics. Uh, <laughs> if, you want to see, if you want to see more about that, I, we went into some detail about that with the, you know, what did we do before comics thing. Uh, the only thing I, did, I ever did before comics uh, was play with Hot Wheels cars and draw spaceships. So, well, I've been doing comics for a long time. Um, uh, now let's skip forward to you know uh, life as it is today. Uh, not only do I have a day job, I have two kids, and my day job has a one-hour commute attached to it uh, each way. So I'm I'm running two hours a day on the road, and then I've got you know eight or well. Technically nine hours because we have an hour for lunch uh, at work, and then I come home. So I, you know, I leave the house around you know eight forty-five or nine o'clock in the morning, and I don't get home until uh, you know eight thirty or so, you know eight o'clock, eight thirty. Um, so I have to squeeze the comic work in wherever I can, and, and even I, I can tell you, it, if it's just your friends with day jobs and they've got their own thing going on, it's much easier to tell them, okay, I'm not available this day and this day. Four-year-olds do not respect I am not available on, <laughs> at this time. Uh, so so uh, my production of the comic, uh, I, I've approached it in two ways. First of all, I've said, okay, I'm only ever going to spend this long on a strip. So I, I must draw it very quickly and get it done. So I've got this much time to do the strips, and I have to find that time somewhere. Um, That's a really good point. Not just. Know, I mean, some people. Some people. Are, on it. Yeah, some people are, are are able to to get away with with saying, okay, well, you know, I can do. I can. It'll take me however long it takes me to finish this. Aaron Diaz, you rule. No, he's off. <laughs> uh, 
And his art is amazing, and apparently he's speeded up a lot recently. But um, it's totally worth waiting for it. Uh, but I, I don't have the luxury. I would love to have the luxury to spend a whole day on doing comics, but I, I don't. Uh, so I, I have a, a specific time budget, rather than a locked schedule, like a specific schedule. I have a budget, and I know how long it's going to take me to do the strip, and I keep it to that. Uh, as far as scheduling, I'm, I wind up spreading it around. Sometimes I work on the comic at work uh, during lunchtime or right before I leave. I'll put a half an hour in. And then sometimes uh, I work at home at night and after everybody goes to sleep, which is always an hour later than we want it to be. Uh, I'm back here in my office and, and working. So, so, uh, so it's it's a little it's a little tougher when you're doing both a day job and a family. Do, do either of you guys have families or kids or anything? No kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I have a cat, a girlfriend, <laughs> and, and her cat. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're they're very time consuming because uh, they're old cats and they both need medicine twice a day. But it's it's still kind of like you yeah, know, that's different from having to feed and diaper two kids. <laughs> And and also, Daddy, what's this? <laughs> Daddy, what's this? Touch, Daddy, what's this? Touch, Daddy, you making a comic? Yes, Daddy. You, can I help make the comic? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a whole other challenge. Yeah. I think it's, it's so another, fun, you know, it's, it's extra human beings in in your in your creative space, and it takes some getting used to. It. Yeah, uh, I think another thing that's helped me too is that um, sometimes when I like have a set time and I'm like okay this is my time outside of my day job to work on my comic it's not that necessarily you can force your ideas to come so it's a good idea I get a lot of ideas at work so I'll just write it down and then you know keep all those little crazy person scraps of paper for later because mm -hmm. um, then your mind can kind of be free to do what you have to do but you also don't feel like like now when you go for that set time to write your comic you already have ideas so you don't have to waste any of it being like oh we're gonna do now um, and it can make you feel like more um, that your day job is worth it because I, I had a lot of trouble thinking that my day job was you know important to me because comics are what's important to me but it is your day job is important besides the fact that it's allowing you to live and eat um, it also gives you like time and money to do comic stuff right um, yeah uh, that's that's one of the things that we talked about kind of before the the Hangout started uh, was uh, was the this kind of idea that uh, that some people kind of think that they're a failure if they don't work on comics full time, um, and and I thought that was a really important topic to get into. So uh, I don't know if, if if you guys wanted to talk about that for a little bit longer, or or uh, if we could kind of segue into into that. Um, like when Multiplex first started getting uh, a handful of readers. You know, a couple thousand readers a day or whatever. Um, I I was I felt like I was kind of on the cusp of becoming a professional cartoonist, and 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 it kind of ate away at me. The longer my my strip kind of just it didn't it kind of stopped growing at around the uh, I don't remember exactly uh, what it was at the eight or nine thousand readers a day level, and um, and so it's kind of like sat at. You know, roughly somewhere between thirty and forty thousand readers a month, and it just stopped growing about six or so years ago, and just never, never went up again. Um, I, I still I have a loyal audience, and that's awesome, but it's it's not enough to you know pay my rent and uh, pay my bills and you know pay for all the computer stuff that I need and and whatever. Um, so it, you know, it was it took a little adjusting adjusting in my attitude, uh, my idea of, of what I was doing with my day job, and also it kind of took a lot of uh, rethinking of what I wanted a day job uh, to do. Um, when I was doing print production, you know, I one of the things I liked about it was the fact that I didn't care about <laughs> about it. I cared about doing a good job, but the print production itself, it was it was a technical job. I, I finished it. I went home. I was happy, um, and I didn't think about it. I, I got to think about comics. I got to think about movies, uh, whatever. Um, and then eventually, I started, you know, realizing I could I could do more freelance illustration, and so freelance illustration started taking up more and more of my time. And so that 
uh, kind of turning my day job into something that I found almost as rewarding, if not equally rewarding, on some projects um, uh, as doing comics uh, was was really important to me. And so part of the reason I went to grad school, or I'm at grad school now, uh, is because I want to teach um, uh, and I want to you know do graphic design projects that mean a lot to me. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I'm I'm kind of transforming my day job into something that I care about as deeply as I do comics, and and you know I suppose if you if you want to look at it in a very cynical way that makes me a failure as a cartoonist. I'm still I'm doing the finger quotes again. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but uh, yeah, it, it, you know it's. It, it just means I'm not a full, you know, a full-time cartoonist, and it doesn't mean that the, the audience that I have is is less uh, less worthwhile or less meaningful. Absolutely, they're not. Uh, uh, or wait, uh, I forgot what my grammar was trying to get at there. But uh, you know, they're still incredibly important uh, to to me and and the strip, uh, and um, it's just not the only source of income that I have, and uh, and it's not the only source of uh, you know like full professional fulfillment that I have either. And and I think that's kind of something. Um, that that people should keep in mind when they're doing a comic because it's not just comics or nothing. It's it's right. you know comics yeah. and yeah, I, I I would echo that. I mean that's precisely behind my quest to be a concept artist, you know, and, and to work in video games. It's like I love video games. I've been playing them forever. Uh, I did the same thing as you did in production and web design and graphics, just like you guys uh, for a long time. You know, I worked at a dot com. I've done a lot of, uh, uh, you know, I worked at a construction company doing presentation work uh, constantly. Um, so I, I did kind of the same thing, uh, transition through a series of art jobs to get to the art job that I have now, which is, you know, it, it's as close to drawing spaceships for a living all the time as, as it can <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I probably could get closer and actually only draw spaceships for a living, but there's a couple guys at the top of the heap that are doing most of the work, and, and uh, it's tough to compete with, uh, with guys like that. So, But, but yeah, that's, I'm doing the same thing. We're making video games. I'm having fun doing that. I work with some great people. Uh, it's a completely different kind of collab uh, collaborative uh, construction project. But, uh, but yeah, uh, if... If you can get another art job that you like while you're also doing comics, it really, you know, there's synergy there. Because a lot of people in video games love comics. And you can always pitch your comic to a video game company to make a video game. So. Right. Yeah, so I've had a lot of people ask me also, um, like, basically, if I have a plan for doing comics full-time. Like, <laughs> like if, do, you, do you want to do comics full-time? Or some people are like, well, you'll hate it if you do it full-time. Like, what do you, what's your guys' opinion on that? Like, I want to do comics full-time for sure, and I know I won't hate it because I've been doing it outside of a day job forever, and I wouldn't do that if I didn't love it. But um, it is interesting to think of it that way. Um, are you actually really interested in doing this and just this as much as you can, or do you want to balance it with another job that you also have an interest in, you know? That's something to ask yourself when you're doing comics. Yeah, you're not going to know whether you hate the work of doing comics until you do the comics. Uh, you know, I, I've come across a couple of... It, it's kind of weird when you get into a job that you think you might like and then you realize, you know what, I really don't like this work all that much. And it, and it, happens, it happens to everybody, you know, at some point. I think. Um, it is work, and you have to wrap your brain around that because it's not just you know sitting back and smoking weed and watching movies and dashing off a comic every once in a while. He's talking to me. <laughs> talking to everybody. Okay. I did the same thing. I put a lot of hours in on this on Super Nintendo. Dude. <laughs> I you know I, I used to be a rock and roll musician, and that is sitting back, smoking weed, watching movies, and playing guitar at the same time. Right. So. I, I think I think a lot of people kind of fall in love with this ideal of uh, of a lifestyle, you know, say with with being a uh, a, a rock musician, a rock star, yeah, yeah, uh, and and yeah, being you know, lifestyle. yeah, um, well, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever met any of the old you know the older cartoonists that you know made their millions in you know strip yeah. cartooning, but some of those guys you know they live in mansions and they drink you know two hundred dollar bottle scotch and they you know they're they have this wonderful social life and stuff, and you look at that and go, "Geez, man, wouldn't that be great?" You know, there's nobody in, in 
comics now, who's going to be that, you know, that sort of socialite millionaire cartoonist that used to happen back in the fifties and sixties. I don't know if Penny Arcade's millionaires. Uh, those two. Uh, those guys. I, they, their their company processes millions through it, but they are not. Uh, I don't believe that they are millionaires. Unless they're um, really good with their investments. I think it depends on what's important to you. Figure out where your yeah. bar is. Like, do you just want to live? <laughs> do you want to eat? Right. Right. What What's your measure of success? You know. It, it, you can't really go by a societal measure of success. You have to look at your own thing. You know what? How? How? It, it's kind of difficult for someone to to sit down and quantify to yourself what is success. What does being a cartoonist mean to me? Right. I know it means this to Gordon, and it means this to me, <laughs> it means this to you know Gabe and Tycho, and this to Scott Kurtz. But what does it mean to me? You know, do do I want to be like Gaten Tycho? Well, great. You need to hire Bob Koo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but that's I mean that's the kind of thing that you, you you need to process that and say you know well okay um, if being successful to you is being able to buy a house with cash and take vacations to the Caribbean twice a year and travel around the world, that's not a you know. There's right. no judgment there. If that's a measure of success to you, that's great. Comics may not be the way to do that, and and you may have to face that. That's a, you know that's a reality, right. you know, or figure out a way to make that happen. <laughs> what's What's funny is that a lot of people measure success by how doing something enables them to not do it and and, and go and take a vacation or something. And like for me, the my measure of success is whether or not it enables me to keep doing it. Like, I, I want to do comics so that I could do more comics. Um, and so for me, it's selling enough uh, or, or, you know, do, drawing freelance illustrations or, or whatever. The, the, the whole point is to keep doing that because I enjoy doing it. And I kind of enjoy a, a lot of things. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy, enjoy doing freelance illustrations. I enjoy, and, and I enjoy doing comics. Um, and, uh, and, but there are also a lot of other things that I want to do. So for me, like, I just want to kind of do all this stuff, and um, and so that's kind of my idea of success. It's kind of broadened a lot, I think, as I've gotten older, too, uh, is, is realizing that I have way too much to, to be interested in. But to get back to the, um, the you know, would I hate it if I, if I just did comics or just did whatever? No, absolutely. I would, I would completely love it. Uh, I, can, I can see how somebody who was just an illustrator might... Uh, might get bored if they had to work with scripts that they weren't totally crazy about. Like a lot of the mainstream, uh, mainstream artists, uh, or or uh, even even indie artists that that do freelance work, uh, like freelance comics. Uh, I I I would get really frustrated if I had to work with, on a script that I didn't think was great. Um, I that's kind of why I started writing. Uh, I I'd always written a little bit, but. I never really thought of myself as a writer until um, until I, I kind of got tired of looking for a project and uh, and ended up just writing my own um, and and then I realized I guess that makes me a writer, huh? Um, and now I kind of enjoy the writing almost as much or sometimes more than than the drawing. Um, so it's it's a little it's like they they kind of scratch different itches. Well, um, like it's a different subsection of comics. To mm -hmm. do comics that you want to do, like you could do comics for a living, and it's never like your choice. Right. You just happen to be making a living at it. So yeah, that's a good point. It's it depends on how much the creative freedom is important to you and what you're willing to sacrifice to get that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just if you're happy with pushing your pencil around a piece of paper drawing Captain America all the time, you you can probably make a living doing that. You know, if you're good at it, you have to be good at. It. Uh, you know, there's politics involved, but not everybody's not everybody's you know would enjoy that. I, I don't as much as I love Captain America and I love Jack Kirby comics and stuff like that. You know, I don't think I could do that. Uh, you'd have to throw a lot of money my way to to get me to even want to try to draw that kind of comic unless I was just doing it for myself and like you say, writing it you know for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the luxury of having a writer on my here. I don't have to. I don't have to work too hard. I didn't create the story. <laughs> but I, I can. I came in with you know with a, a pretty full set of characters and interactions and, and a guy who knows how to write comic script. Uh, Bill's, Bill's really good at that. So um, 
that makes it much easier for me in that sense. Uh, I'm not a writer. I've decided you know, that there are lots of people who are way better at that than me, so I mean, I'm, I play around with it in my brain, but in, in the practical sense, I don't think I have time to develop myself as a writer because I'm too I'm still too busy developing myself as an as an artist and so on. So and you know, I think that's fine because I've I've read a lot of comics and I'm not gonna name any specifics because it's kind of a you know, kind of a shitty thing to say, but uh, I've read a lot of artists uh, write stuff that because they're not really like focusing on the writing, because uh, because it's not their strength by any means, they it's the same derivative kind of sappy crap that uh, that you've read a million times before, yeah. and and it looks beautiful. They're great artists, but they have no business writing. Um, or you know, I mean, and it's fine if they enjoy that, but um, but you know, if uh, you know, it, it's kind of just where your priorities are. If you if you want to, you know, if you want to be an artist, you find. Find a find a writer that's gonna give you what you, what you want to work with, um, and, uh, and and yeah, sometimes that means not working with yourself as a writer. Firing yourself as a writer. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, I I, I fired myself as a writer. Because, uh, <laughs> well, no, I did a, I did a comic called um, I'm Just a Bit Off for quite a while. Uh, some people probably have seen it. Um, but it was just it was just a little slice of life, um, you know, me writing what was going on around me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I did it deliberately as a, hey, you know, I want to learn how to write better. I want to learn how to write comics and stuff. And it just, you know, I, I was just never able to put enough um, craft of writing into it to really make it. I mean, it was fine for me, and I liked doing it up to a certain point, but it got to the point where I just, it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, and I wasn't right. improving as a writer, and I, uh, you know, I, I just kind of let it go. I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. Let's, let me do something else. Yeah. And, and yeah. I've always kind of taken comfort in the fact that I'm not a great writer and I'm not a great artist, so therefore my style matches itself. Like, when I write <laughs> it's equally mediocre, and that's okay. Like, when I have to draw for someone else, it's a lot of a lot more challenging. You know, when I have to write for someone else, it's a lot more challenging. But that's good in the sense that it'll make me get better. But it's also like, I'm way more comfortable writing and drawing my own stuff because I know it's equally like sucky. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that that's harsh. I, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> um, hard on yourself. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, but like that's the only way you get better is to like just keep doing it. You know, right. and keep like. And at first, I thought I would never be given the opportunity to draw for someone else. And I, I got to work with an, an actual writer and draw everything. And it was so weird and foreign to me, but it was such a good experience to like concentrate on one aspect and try to see how you were at that. Yeah. Well, uh, long before Multiplex, I, I had to work on a... Uh, I, I talked with a writer, and I, we were trying to work on a science fiction comedy sort of comic strip. And it never got off the ground because I was never happy with the script. Um, I'm, I guess I, I'm enough of a control freak that, or I was at least enough of a control freak that it just wasn't happening. Um, I, I wonder now if I could actually work on an, on somebody else's script um, because I, I do feel like um, as a writer I have a very small kind of niche. Uh, as an artist I have a very small niche, and I just got lucky that Multiplex kind of there's a very thin overlap between them. But there there's a lot of like there's some stories that I want to work on. Or, or kind of really more nonfiction comics uh, that I want to work on that I don't think I would be the the most ideal artist and I and I want to work on some stories that I I would never write myself like I, I don't really think of myself as a as like a science fiction writer uh, but I would like to do like a a short uh, science fiction comic sometime uh, it's a very small self contained thing um, so you know I, I I don't know I got lucky with multiplex but. Um, uh, I, I would like to kind of branch out a little bit more. I think we're. Uh, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we're gonna back around. Oh, go ahead. We're gonna wander a little bit. Um, I, now I've I've uh, I've talked to some people who pers who have a perception of you know, the quote unquote web comics community, which isn't really a community. It's just a whole bunch of people doing their thing. Uh, has a bit of a. Uh, let's call it. Let's call it a, a, a perceived bias toward the self-entrepreneur type. 
You know, there's a lot of a lot of the people who have been successful doing web comics full time uh, seem I, I don't think they are, but they seem to be you know, the kinds of people who are like, uh, if you don't drop everything and just do what you do and only do that and don't do anything else, uh, sort of mentality, then then you know you're not quote unquote I'll air quote this time successful in web content. <laughs> and, and I've got to bring that back to you know what I said before. It's like you are your own you, you make your own measure of success. Right. Um, and there is no accounting for luck also. Right. Yeah, there there's no yeah. timing timing is so important and, and just having happening to have the right creative I mean this is true of all creative disciplines. Having the right property I hate to use that word, but it's what we use in the IP business. But having the right property in the right place at the right time, seen by the right people, you know that, that can it can it can turn into a, a monster for you, and that's great. And and you know, but the other fifteen people who had something sort of like that that weren't in the right place at the right time with the right people seeing it, you know, they they don't get the success that you do, even if the stuff was comparable. Right. So, I mean, success doesn't mean that you're good or that you're worth it and everybody else isn't worth it. It just means, yeah. you know, it's a good combination of things and you, you might right. be very good, you might be very talented, you might not, but um, I think the important thing too is that we're kind of, we're all in it together, so we're not competing. Like, everybody right. is in this together. We all want more and more people to read comics. Right, and, and uh, you know, it has been happening and it's great. And, <laughs> and, and we all feed each other's audiences. We're not... We, we are not competing for a space this big on a piece of paper anymore. We have monitors that are now 5,000 pixels across if you get a new iMac. Uh, and you can put as many comics on them as you want. So, so there's, no, there's no competition in the classical. I, mean, <laughs> I, I started the finger quote. Uh, I'm going to you guys keep it over on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating the way my fingers are doing this on the screen. Anyway. Yeah, there's, there's no competition in that sense. But you know, the competition is you make, make the comic that you love. That's the first thing you got to do, and then keep making it, and hopefully it'll become a comic that other people love. You know, find find people. That, you have to be a little proactive about finding those people. But. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's important too. You won't get handed anything. Um, no. You have to actively be a part of the community, and not just to promote yourself. You have to get involved, and you know, and that's the fun part is you get to learn from other people and. Um, learn different styles and mishmash with other creators that you may never have met otherwise. Right. Or just comics. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a lot of people doing this, and I've been lucky enough to meet a whole lot of them. And now I've met you guys. I, Gordon, I think we met at Comic Con somewhere, but I haven't met Monica before. <laughs> uh, so you know, yeah, we can, and we all trade. We all trade our war stories, and we all trade our techniques for how we you know, produce our stuff, and we all trade our thoughts about how to. Try to make a living at it, or try to earn some money at it, or uh, and and you know the, just the interaction with the other people is, is uh, a part of the success. I think it's awesome. And I would say another benefit to having a day job um, to kind of bring it back to where you were saying that um, you know sometimes some comics people like their writing is like they're repeating themselves or they're repeating other people. Mm -hmm. I found the benefit of having a day job is you do get out of your house and you have to work with all these people you may or may not hate like like and they're all different backgrounds all different ages and it's great experience because it really gets like the gears going rather than sometimes it's harder when you work from home I think all the time and don't interact with other people to get like more inspiration yeah that's a huge benefit of having a day job and health insurance yeah. that's also you know there there are times where you know your, your comic is going to be a little frustrating to you and uh, you know the, like I've had chunks of, of the strip where you know, I'm kind of on autopilot with the writing because I, I have these story beats to hit, and and for me, those are the really the most boring parts to draw, because especially if it's like a long conversation, it's like oh, a lot of talking heads, which for a vector drawn comic strip means a lot of cutting and pasting, and <laughs> and a lot of you know just kind of I I really enjoy doing the facial expressions, but uh, but it gets old if that's all I'm doing. Um, for a long period of time, so uh, having something else going on uh, to to kind of keep your brain active uh, keeps keeps the the dark thoughts at bay. <laughs> um. So, 
We should probably ask that. Uh, we did get that one question. Uh, and the, yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, you can just tweet with the hashtag ComfyCon, or you can tweet at ComfyCon or whatever, and we'll get it if you want us to read yeah. your question and answer it. I mean, the, 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 the question that we had even before we started was, you know, how do you do this and not go crazy? And the answer is, you don't. <laughs> you go crazy. No, no. Sorry. <laughs> It didn't frighten any children there. No, we're already crazy. We're cartoonists. You know, we're artists. So, well, yeah, you are only doing it because you love it. Because you have to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Yeah. You know, my <laughs> wife asked me, "Why do you keep doing comics? They're not, you know, your concept art is awesome, and you can do more with it." I'm like, "I like comics." He's like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> I like comics. I like making comics. I want to keep doing comics. Even if it's just a little bit of comics on the side of everything else I'm doing, I still want to do comics. So, so I'm doing it. And I'm crazy. Yeah, this kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier. Like, The idea of doing something as a hobby is not bad. There's nothing wrong with doing something as a hobby. And you know, and it's nice, to, it's nice that it pays for itself um, uh, or that you even make a little bit of money off of it. Multiplex currently pays my rent. Uh, or, uh, you know, it pays for itself and most of my rent. Um, and that's awesome. But, uh, and yeah, it'd be nice if, if, if it paid for everything because then I could still do multiplex and the other projects that I want to do uh, and, and not have to worry about rent. Um, and I could be more choosy with the side projects that I take. Um, but, you know, it's also just a question of attitude too. You know, when I... When people ask me what I do, I'm doing the finger. God damn it! <laughs> the finger quotes again. Um, you know, when people ask me what I do, I say I'm a I'm a cartoonist. I identify that way because that to me that's kind of the the, the big important thing. Um, and and almost invariably they're like, oh cool. And I'm like, yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I also you know I also you know, teach class in grad school and I or as part of my grad school funding and uh, and I am a grad school student but uh, and even though that takes more time out of my life it, it's not it's not the part that kind of gives me the most satisfaction so um, when will you be finished with the grad school Lord uh, I've got uh, after this semester which is uh, up in a couple of weeks uh, or a few weeks uh, I've got a year left, so mm -hmm. I, I basically I start my thesis project um, in well as soon as it's done really. Uh, but January is a, is around when I'm actually going to just almost full time work on my thesis project. Um, I have one other class, an advanced film analysis class, uh, but uh, but just there'll be just thesis all the time and and the the teaching um, uh, for for the next year and and of course multiplex. But, That's uh, hot. You know, that's a lot. <laughs> it, it is. It is definitely a lot. But uh, hopefully, that'll be better than three classes and teaching and multiplex. <laughs> the last, the last uh, two and a half years have been uh, pretty, pretty rough. So. So, what's your vision for what you're doing after you finish? Once you've got your, once you've finished your school here, when you gonna, uh, how are you gonna, uh, the, the the reason I'm getting an MFA is because I I want to publish stuff and and I want to be like a, a digital publisher, um, my own stuff of course, uh, but I also want to to publish work by other people, uh, comics, print, uh, prose, um, uh, stuff that I I, I feel like, I mean not only things that you can only do digitally. Um, because I'm not super into like inf infinite canvas type comics. The, to, to me, that kind of smacks of uh, gimmickry. Um, but but there are things that you could do digitally that you can't really do, um, or you can't do as effectively in print. Um, you know, selling a one-off short story, you can do that in print, but you know nobody's going to buy a 16-page pamphlet, whereas they might buy a 16-page ebook. Um, so there there are different differences. Um, uh, and I and I enjoy you know designing uh, books and and ebooks to some extent too. Um, so that's kind of what I want to get into, um, as well as also doing more comics projects. So so you're not thinking, you're not taking this as oh I'm going to go back you know when I leave here I'm going to get a day job at such and so. Mm -hmm. uh, I might I, I might uh, like if I could find a teaching job someplace great mm -hmm. if uh, if I find a, a a an interesting looking. Uh, Design job someplace that uh, 
uh, it actually does respect the whole work-life balance thing, then yeah. I might. But I, I'm definitely going to, as, as much as possible, try to keep freelancing um, so that I can do my own thing. One of the things I, I like about doing full-time freelance work is that if I want to work on uh, a project uh, for myself, I just stop taking freelance work. I don't need to try to get vacation time. I don't need to, you know, I don't need anybody's permission. I just say, no, I'm booked. And and uh, and that that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And I, I imagine it's the same for you, right? As a well, no, you yours is a. I have a full time. I, I am an employed person. Uh, I have a full time okay. day job. I get a, you know I get paid a salary to 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 uh, do my mm -hmm. the day job stuff. And I'm working on you know I'm working on cool games and stuff. Uh, I'm always sort of. You know, it, again, it, it changes a little bit when you have kids and, you know, a, and a family. Um, right. You know, I, I, I do need to increase my income. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Um, it would be great if more of it came from comics. Uh, I, you know, there are ways for me to increase income, uh, you know, in, in the concept art biz, but, you know, it, it takes time and it takes work and, and uh, you know I have to I have to juggle all that along with I don't want to be the father that the kids never see you know it's like but you're like wa wanting to be a reasonably decent parent is a powerful motivator for a lot of well so that's another question how do you guys stay um, like motivated and committed to doing comics if it doesn't necessarily pay the bills or if it takes you away from your family and your friends and your significant others, you know, sometimes that's hard. I know for me it's hard sometimes to be like, oh, you know, like, I gotta go, I gotta leave this party because I have to work on a comic that maybe no one's gonna read, you know? How do you, uh, like, stay motivated to kind of put those other things aside and still, like, devote time to your comic? Sheer mindedness. I, I, I won't give up. And uh, I, I'm not, like, a fierce bulldog about it. I'm more of a passive-aggressive, you know, Found <laughs> about it, but, but I just won't give up. I just keep doing. It. Yeah, um, I I don't have friends. <laughs> uh, no, I I have I have Twitter. <laughs> All my friends are on Twitter. Counts. So um, it's in that little box, and you can say hi to them whenever you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I you know, grad school is a really busy time. So, uh, so we, my girlfriend and I moved to Minneapolis, uh, you know, three years ago, and uh, three and a half years ago, whatever. And uh, and I haven't made a whole lot of friends here, uh, just because I'm so busy uh, working and working and working. Um, uh, but um, you know, it, it's, I, I mean, I, I'm friends with people in my program, I guess, but a lot of them have kids, and so it's not like we hang out, we just talk at school a, a lot, and, and things like that, so, uh, it, I don't know, it's, it, to me, I, I just, I just put the strip first, and, and, you know, any time, like, I, I get it done, and, and, and everything else just kind of fills in the gaps around that. Um, well, obviously, work, uh, I can't just blow off a class, especially if I'm teaching. But that, that's a little different. So uh, so all the the rest of the time, I just, you know, I, I just put my work first. So um, uh, I'll be straight with you. you know, doing this causes friction with my wife, and it causes friction with the kids. And I, I try to minimize it as much as I possible. Not, not really friction with the kids, but the kids want to hang out with me. You know, they're, they're my kids, and I love them, and they love me. And, you know, I come in the house at night, and it's like, Daddy, hey, how you doing? Hugs and kisses. Okay, it's bedtime. You know, <laughs> that's kind of rough. And, that, and that's why, you know, I mean, that's frankly why, you know, bedtime is, is always one hour later than it should be, if, if not you know, one and a half or two hours later. So, and, and you know, my wife and I, we, we've had to make a set schedule for our time. You know, we, this day and this day, once the kids are asleep, this is our time. I won't. I, I don't work, and we have our time together. You know, and, you know that's kind of ass backwards, uh, <laughs> to be honest with you. And and it, it does cause friction. Um, but you know, I just I just got to keep at it. And, and you know, we're, we're you know, this this is public, so this is cool. I'm, we're doing a Patreon for not inventing here because. 
uh, at the beginning of the project, you know, Bill and I talked about it. I'm like, okay, if, if it's not making enough money for, for me personally, you know, paying me for my time to make it worthwhile to deal with that, you know, loss of several hours a week and the friction with my family in three years, then we're going to let it go. Well, yeah, Patreon is huge. I think that's a that's such a great way to support people. And I mean, I know I have one. Gordon, do you have one too? Yeah. Yep. Um, and I and I I make uh, significantly more money than I I have in years from ad revenue. Um, you know, there was a sweet spot in in the web comic ad revenue. I, I think like around two thousand six, two thousand seven, maybe. And it's just tanked since. Um, but yeah, I, I make I make easily twice as much money from from uh, from uh, from Patreon than I did with ad revenue. I know some people still do ads, uh, but for me, I wanted to get rid of the ads like nobody's business. I hate ads. I yeah. hate ads on the internet, and um, and so I wanted to you know make this like a PBS thing. It's like if you want to see multiplex, this is this is the way to do it. Um, sorry, not taking ad money. Just it's yeah, blood money. Um, it really helps me too. I don't know about you guys, but it helps me um, be more committed to my strip too. Like I'll let a day or two slide when you know I update on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I'm like, oh, no one's gonna know. Whatever. I'm putting mm -hmm. it up there for free. But with like just getting a Patreon thing, it was like, okay, well now I'm like telling people that I'm going to post sketches mm -hmm. and stuff at a certain time, and now I feel a lot more accountable, and that helps. That helps motivate me and be more excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to know that, that people like you enough to actually, like, literally hand you money. Yeah, yeah you know, and not in the sense of, of you know, uh, donations or whatever, because it's not a donation. They are paying you to produce your work, which, mm -hmm. is, which is pretty amazing. Um, you know, again, with our Patreon, we've got a bottom limit we've got to hit. If we don't hit it, I'm going to stop doing that and go to here. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, I think the, the strip itself is just going to end. Because we're asking our audience... Well, how much do you really like us? Do you like? Do you really like us? Do you like us enough? You know, and uh, and you know, I, I I don't think anyone could say I haven't given it a, a fair shot. You know, three years working on a comic was was a pretty good chunk of time, and you know, a pretty decent chunk of friction I've had to absorb to, to make that happen. So, so yeah, so the Patreon is super helpful, and it's it's uh, you know direct reinforcement or non-reinforcement, if you will, of, of what you're doing. Um, oh, sorry. I think it looks like I think we got a... Yes, we have a question. Oh, no. Well, I think um, we also have to stop because I think Danielle is starting her live stream soon, so we should probably wrap uh, it up. You, you guys can overlap. It's okay. It's oh, funny. no, we're not going to overlap. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. If you want to watch her, it's up to you, but you can overlap. It's not a problem. Oh, okay. We should probably wrap it up in the next, like, Five ten minutes anyway, but uh. yeah, and Danielle's just getting situated. She didn't even realize she was broadcasting. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> like literally, I went to her YouTube channel and she's screaming, like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "You're, you're." She just texts me, "How do I get on YouTube?" I'm like, "You're on YouTube right now. You're, <laughs> all your swears are coming through." <laughs> so I'll so remute. Sorry, didn't. I just wanted to let you know. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> we do have a question, uh, Monica. If you, if you wanna. I, I was actually I, before we get to the question. I just I was just going to mention that uh, that um, when uh, when Randy was uh, kind of in between um, in, in between paying attention or join, joining us or not, he has this kind of static photo at the bottom, and and he was not moving at all, and it was so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that it was just like. Maybe that's yeah. how it, that's his resting face. That's just random. <laughs> no, it's it's not even so much the the face he was making, but the fact that it wasn't moving at all. Uh, but anyway, uh, question, question. What was the question? Okay, uh, go ahead. You go ahead, Jeff. Oh, you want me to read it? Okay. Um, uh, this is from Terrence Barnard on Twitter. Where's that little tweet noise from Tweet and Harder? Uh, how do you get others to help the cause? Artist looking for writer, writer looking for artist. Make friends. Go out. Yeah. Uh, really, there's you know, go to comic cons. Uh, yeah, go to comic cons and just get to know people a lot before you even ask them to write your comic or draw your comic. You have to kind of build a friendship first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, you know. we all want to see someone who who kind of knows what they're doing. You know, mm -hmm. like it, working like that is a matter of mutual respect. You know, uh, the first comic I did, Mystic for Hire, I did it with my friend Chris. 
who was one of the guys who worked at the comic shop where I used to buy all my comics, and we had hung out a million times and talked about stuff. And so, hey, I got this idea for a comic. Can you draw it? Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, hate to say this, but I did flake out on the one, and I already mentioned this earlier, but I did sort of flake out on the one uh, project that I was going to work with another person, and I felt really, I felt really bad about that one. But, uh, but um, yeah, so I'm not super, supremely equipped to 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 answering this. I've worked with uh, a writer on like a one-page comic here and there, and and I just helped him do some lettering for another one. But follow uh, up-and-coming writers that you like on on. Uh, Twitter, and every once in a while they'll be like, hey, I'm working on a new project, I want to make a pitch, um, you know, looking for artists, and you could just, you know, if you think you're uh, well suited to that genre or, or whatever, um, just hit them up, and and they'll look at your samples, and, and you know, that uh, it, or if the other, if, if you're a writer, you know, hopefully you'll have a little bit of a, a, a following, but, um, you know, Post about it. You say, "Hey, I have, a, I have a pitch that I'm working on. I want to find an artist." And if you're friends with enough people, they'll kind of amplify that signal. Um, any any writer that I know that looks for artists, um, I, I'll you know I'll retweet that. Um, so so Twitter's a really good way. Um, I don't know. Digital webbing might still uh, exist. Uh, I haven't used it in years, yeah, but uh, so. but digital webbing might be a good place to find uh, find people to to look up. Um, you know. So. You know. Uh, definitely get to know someone's stuff before you approach them. I have so many people say, like, I'm at your table right now and I'm looking at this picture and I like it. Do you want to draw my comic? It's like, well, no. <laughs> um, and that yeah. happens a lot. It's just like, well, get to know people, get to know their styles, get to know what they do, read their stuff, you know, participate, get mm -hmm. to know them, and then talk to them. Because you don't, I mean, when you think of it, you don't want to work with someone that you've never met before. You just don't. You want to know if they're a good person they can do their commitments if they can you know if they have the same style that you want to work with that's a, that's just as important as finding someone is developing a relationship yeah. first right i mean there's there's a level at which you know if you're a professional artist um, working with people that you've never met before um, is is part of the thing but we're not at that level we're we're all sort of you know doing our own thing you know if you if you're going to draw you know for dc comics you may work with people that you've never worked with before, but you have to prove yourself to the editors first. You know, there, yeah, there's, yeah. that's that's a completely different level and and style of making business happen. Uh, you know, and with the concept art club, do the same thing. You know, I put my work up on the web, and sometimes people email me and say, you know, would you like to work with me on a project? And you know, as a concept artist, the first thing I do is send it back, well, here's my rate, and this is what I need from you, and and all that. And if it is a professional project, then they have all that, and they send me back their brief, and they, yeah. you know, they tell me whether you know I fit their budget or not. And, and you know, yeah. so uh, can you come yeah. and run a spaceship for me? Is a whole other thing. Yeah, unless you have a personal stake in uh, in a project, um, don't work for free. Exactly. I was just going to say that. I know that's getting passed around, thank God, a lot. It didn't when I started, but don't work for free. Don't work for exposure. Yeah. yeah. It do, if it, my motto is if it's not for me, it's not for free. <laughs> I'm using that. Seriously. If it's, not, if it's not for me, it's not for free. Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 that's totally fine. You know, if you find somebody to work with and, and you, you have a... You, Decide, yeah, I'm gonna share a stake with this person. Um, then, yeah, that's fine to work for uh, fifty percent of what might start off to be nothing. But, um, but if they're like, hey, you know, draw my comic, uh, I don't have any money to pay you, then just tell them the fuck off. Right. You know, you've got, <laughs> like, your time is worth more than that. You can be nice about it, but, but well, yeah, uh, yeah. To, uh, that's paraphrasing. <laughs> what, 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 tell them to follow fourexposure.txt. <laughs> And have, and have uh, Ryan Estrada put him in the clip. Yeah. All right, so I guess, do you guys, uh, do you want to, should we wrap this up so that, I mean, I'm sure everyone's already mm -hmm. moving on to the next panel, but. Uh, <laughs> Party any words. Last words you, you, you still have 26 viewers. Oh, <laughs> oh 26. Wow. wow. 26. Uh, was there another question, actually, then? Um, I'm not looking at the are. YouTube page. Yeah, but, I don't see uh, one either. Um, if anyone still has an internet question, send it to us on the internet. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes, we're, we're pretty easy to find on Twitter. I'm just Jeff Zugale. I'm the only person in the world with my name, so I'm really easy to find. 
maybe the picture is just just wrong. No, on Twitter the only question we've got is the one we've already yeah. brought up. But uh, <laughs> Randy's a glowing ball. Randy's just, Randy makes a random noise and his face just pops up in judgment. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds us who's king. <laughs> I am the Lord on high of Comfy Con. <laughs> Sorry, I, I actually had actually to mute my mic, and I actually just turned camera off instead. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, yeah. All right, well, nice hanging with you guys. Yeah, it's great to meet you guys. This is really fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know why. I have to manually put my picture up every time I, I show up. I can't just talk like the rest of the, the world. Hopefully people can actually hear me. I've got the dots, so who knows? Anyway, um, yeah, so I, I don't really have any parting words other than, uh, you know, check out my strip if, uh, if if you didn't think I was an insufferable ass on this. So, you know. Good part is that, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm kind of an insufferable ass. <laughs> if you like air quotes, read my comments. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It just, it just, uh, uh. Yeah. Double bunnies. Double bunnies. That's what that is. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being part of ComfyCon. And for those thank of you still you. watching, please take a chance to look at their comics and go to the vendor page. Um, I know that uh, uh, Gordon and Monica have links to their stores there. Jeff um, does uh, his, there's a link to Not Invented Hager store where he does the comics. Or draws them. And uh, thank you guys for joining. Thanks for being our panelists. Really appreciate it. We all have Patreons. <laughs> what? We all have Patreons. Uh, yeah, yeah. Find uh, Patreons. You know. Give them money. Yeah. Check out our strips. Then give us money. <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.